How do we plan an MVP? Here is a quick step-by-step -step guide. So before I talk about MVPs, please subscribe to our channel to get more great insights and update about our product design, UX, design sprints, and more. And now, the MVP. A lot of our clients approach us after a design sprint and ask us to help them figure out how their MVP should look like. Today, I'm gonna to share with you exactly how we help them figure out a roadmap and a priority plan for their MVP. In this video, I assume you already have a good idea what kind of a solution you're gonna offer and who are your users. If you don't, you should probably do a design sprint first. Going forward from a concept, even a very concrete one, into an MVP plan requires careful analysis of the implication of your concept. It requires technical and functional analysis. Your MVP plan should be a timed list of activities that you have to run. And the most important thing is to come up with a set of priorities because you will probably have to be agile on your MVP. Most MVP tends to change as time unfolds and that's okay because you are in the business of innovation and changes are part of that game. Before we drill down on hows and whats, let's examine the term MVP. MVP stands for Minimal Viable Product. A minimal viable product is a version of your product with just enough feature to satisfy early customers and provide feedback for future product development. It should answer the question, is my idea worth doing? While you can validate quite a lot with just a well-designed prototype, still, before your product actually hits the real market, there's a lot of unknowns to be answered. The MVP should be designed to answer at least the major questions you have. And it should include a set of features that will help us understand where and how we should move forward. So for us to design and plan an MVP, we need to consider two main questions. A, what makes our product viable? And B, what's the minimal set of features we need to develop to make this viable product? So how do we address this? First step, core value proposition. To answer the question, what makes our product viable, we need to agree on the core value proposition of the product. We must agree on the pain we are solving and our main target audience, the people that feel this pain and would be willing to pay for that solution. As focused as we can get on that, as narrow as we can be, the easier our task will be. So, you have to consider that the MVP is not our final product. It's a tool aimed to make us understand our solution and its relationship with the market. You should be thinking about it as a starting point for your market experiment. So like in the lab, you want to have as little clutter as possible. And if you're very focused on a small number of users, it would be much easier and cheaper to reach these users. Once you understand your value proposition, growth will be much easier. The core value proposition has to be written and agreed on. I find it useful to use the following template. Here it goes. Product name provides service to customer in a culture environment with a voice. So helping them feel impact and an X factor. So I'll give you an example. Red ID provides design sprints to startups and corporates in a structured environment with highly professional voice, helping them feel innovative and informed. Our X factor is we make ideas see daylight. Step two, understand the timeline and budget. Usually budget is a bit easier because you know how much money you have, right? But as you hire the team and time becomes money and things become more complex. So, However you prioritize, you must set target timelines. So there are many considerations around timeline. It can be the cost of the team, a market opportunity, or an investor directive. In any case, it should be very clear and feasible, as we will need to plan our MVP around time and resources. A very common mistake is to forget about go-to-market budget and only look at the cost of development. You should allocate budget for rolling off your MVP and supporting it. In many cases, these activities are more expensive than you expect and it usually takes more time than you think to get answers for your MVP. 
Also, you should think about the cost of maintenance and iteration as you'll most likely you'll make a lot of mistakes in your MVP and you will need to iterate both your technology and your design. To approach this, I would first draw a timeline starting today and end in two years from now. Then I would look for KPIs describing how success will look like two years from now. If you can't see that far, make it a year or a year and a half. Then I would mark a rough line around the six months time. This is a thumb rule for MVP development time and you can be as aggressive as three months, but you should take into account that things don't always work the way you plan them. So I usually take six months. Next, think about go-to-market milestone that are required to achieve your KPIs. A good practice is to go backward from the goal, setting two to three midterm measurable milestones. Start with a rough sketch. Get a general agreement from your peers in product, marketing, sales, and R&D. Make sure everyone is aligned on the major milestone before you drill down and detail your plan. This is very, very important. Step three, list of features. Once you identify and agree on your value proposition, you need to outline the features you would include in your MVP. A good way to think about these is to outline the user journey in your product. Think about two or three major use cases a user will have to do in your product to solve their pain. For example, in a vacation booking app, you would have to enable a filtered search, information about the hotel, and the booking process. You would probably need to have a sign-up flow too. If your core value, your differentiator in that app is the ability to communicate with a, online with a hotel, then this also must be included. Draw each use case and use your team to write features and development tasks required for each step. Use Post-it for each task. This should include everything that comes on your team's mind. Don't think about cost or complexity. Think about the use case and how to make it serve the value proposition. Next, group the item based on dependency. For example, you can't have a search without a search engine and a content database of searchable items. Do not cluster things that are not absolutely dependent on each other. Step four, identify the must-have features. These are the basic stuff you have to enable. The must-have features are things that we can't compromise on, things that are central to our product's experience and we are not willing to compromise on their execution quality. Think about Google search, for example. Speed is one of the core values of the search engine. It was a major differentiator and even the first version had to be fast. Give each team member three to five dots and ask them to vote on the top three to five tasks that are must-haves. Finally, make the decider select the must-haves and move them under a list titled must-have. Step five, identify the should-have features. These features must be included in the MVP. The functionality is essential to the user journey, like the must-haves, but the quality of execution can be compromised at this point. For example, you may have to have a payment gate on your launch, but you can decide against fancy payment integration and go for only PayPal's simple cart button. Take all the items that got votes but were not selected for must-have and group them into the list titled should-have. Step six, think about the could-haves. Some of the features are not necessarily a must-have, but are worthwhile having. We need to think about them as sometimes we get our opportunity to add them either to the MVP itself or in the coming versions. It's a good idea to estimate each item's cost implication and identify low-hanging fruits you may want to apply. Draw a grid with two axes, impact and effort. The top left items will become the first items in your could-have list, and the top right items will be at the end of that list. Step 7 won't haves. After skewing through all the features and user flows, prioritizing and deciding, you must have a list of things you will not be doing. If you don't have this, it's probably a sign that you're not prioritizing well. 
MVPs requires tough decision, and not having a list of rejected idea is an alarming sound that may indicate that you don't have a good enough idea about your core value proposition or your target audience. If you went through all the steps, the only thing you need to do is to grab the low impact items from your prioritization grid and place them in the won't have list. Make sure everybody in the organization is well aware that we are not going to do these, even if time and resources enable us to do so. If we can, we will push our launch earlier. MVPs can become tricky. They require strong alignment and strong leadership. Tough decisions are made and you're bound to make some mistakes. But remember, it's more important to get started than being right. One last tip. A good way to get a good MVP plan is by starting with a design sprint. If you have a real looking prototype validated with real users, your discussions and decisions are much easier to make. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them in the responses section and make sure you subscribe to our channel and get a lot of great product UX and design sprints insights. I'll be here next week too, so bye bye, see you then.